Hi everyone, Michelle Markey with Medina Domestic Art Studio. And today's video is how to paint this cowboy boot with flowers. Um, this is actually a kit that I have taught in many classes and I currently do sell it on my website. And one of my clients requested a video uh, as she is remote and there's probably uh, no chance that she's going to be able to take one of my classes. So this is one of the services that I do offer with my website that if you purchase a kit and I have not done a video on it, I would be more than happy uh, to create any video for any one of my kits if it doesn't exist currently. So with that, um, I'm going to kind of go through the steps behind coloring the boot. Um, what I'll do is I'll just show bits and pieces. I'm not going to color the entire thing. That would take way too long and it would be extremely boring. But I am going to touch upon the highlights on how to color uh, bits and pieces, the boot itself, and then some of the flowers so that you can get an idea of how to color this. Now, with all my kits... I do create what I call my chart, my color chart. And in this particular case, we are using nothing but ink tents pencils. Now, when I teach this in class, I actually provide um, paint. Um, this is Pro Chemical and Dyes, well, it's called Special Brown Paint, but basically it's a brown paint. And this is a concentrate. And I actually then turn around and I make up my own paint in a, a large container so that I can make sure everybody has enough paint when they're in class. For today's video, however, I'm actually going to use strictly the pencil listed, and for this one, it's Saddle Brown. Now, I do have the brown paint listed here, but number nine um, is basically going to be replaced by the Saddle Brown. Now, the other thing that I do sometimes with these uh, instructions as I'll actually list various different tips and tricks here on the side. Um, putting the numbers in, by the way, which coordinate with the numbers over here, sometimes that just doesn't give you all the information. So I do like to spell out, for instance, on some of the leaves, how you go about doing it um, and try to do it in a step-by-step -step process. But of course, even with written instructions, sometimes I think a video is actually extremely helpful because you can actually see the process involved. So I'm going to set both of these aside. Um, I will be referring to them as I teach. So I'm going to just lay that right here and point out that I do have all of my ink tense pencils ready to go. And now I just need some fabric medium. Um, I do make my own in case uh, you haven't seen any of my other videos in the past and you're watching this for the first time. However, you can go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby, um, even Walmart. Some of the larger Walmarts will carry, it's either referred to as fabric medium or textile medium. This is what I typically uh, recommend. It's a Delta Ceram Coat textile medium. This, in my opinion, is some of the best out there. It actually dries clear, um, and it actually keeps the fabric fairly soft. Now, of course, like anything, you can get it too thick, and the one thing I advise beginners is don't be stingy, but also don't puddle your fabric medium, and we'll talk about that more as we get, uh, as we get further along into this. Okay. So again, I'm going to just pour a bit of fabric medium. Now we'll be learning several techniques using ink tense pencils, but the very first that I'm going to start out with, and I'm gonna start with some of the flowers first and then work my way down, is basically dry on dry. So let's refer, number one, to our picture. And I'm going to start with some of the yellow. I think that's actually the easiest flower to start out with. And so I'm going to grab my sun yellow, and pardon me while I move this down so I can reach up here. And I'm gonna do something that I would typically tell you not to do, but this is for the sake of the video, is never put your fabric medium on top of your work. Um, that's a recipe for disaster. 
Um, so normally I would have it off to the side, but again, because of the sake of the video, we're, we're going to put it here. And the very first thing I'm going to do is color just one of the petals. And I'm not being super careful. I'm just laying down some color. And by the way, this technique is called dry on dry. So I'm, I'm covering pretty much the petal. Now I'm not going heavy with this and you wanna make sure not to scribble real hard or lay a lot of color down. The key to Inktense pencils, particularly on fabric, is layering your color. So you may start out light and you can always deepen the color. However, if you start out dark, you're going to have dark. Um, the Inktense pencils are very strong colors, and the one thing you don't want to do is go very heavy because there's no way to do any kind of shading afterwards. Now, speaking of shading, I'm now grabbing my Sicilian yellow, and I'm just going to, it's a little bit of a darker yellow. Okay, so now I've just put down the Sicilian yellow on top of the sun yellow. And what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to grab one of my paint brushes. By the way, I use gold Taclon paint brushes. You, you can tell it's a gold Taclon due to the uh, color of the bristles itself. It's a synthetic, but it's actually very stiff. Now I'm gonna come over here and dip my brush into the fabric medium and get it wet. And I start kind of at the base and, and work my way out. What that does is it helps blend the two colors that are towards the center of the petal. And then I just move out towards the stitch line. Now you want to actually rub your bristles very close along the stitch line so that you can get that color all the way into the stitches but without going outside. All right, now I've noticed that it's not quite as dark as I would like with a Sicilian yellow. So while it's still wet, I can come back in and put in a little bit more of the Sicilian yellow, which deepens that center a bit. Again, take your brush, get a little bit more fabric medium, not a lot, just enough to actually spread the color and blend it further. All right, so that technique again was dry on dry. Now let's move over to some of the leaves. And what I wanna do there is I want to actually, by the way, at this point in time, I'm rinsing out my brush and drying it with a paper towel. The one thing you wanna be careful as a beginner is to make sure that you get rid of all the excess water because if you get it on this and then you go to color, you will have bleeding and it will make you unhappy. By the way, there is a video called Secret Weapon Revealed which does talk about tools to help get rid of any boo-boos that you may have outside of the white area. All right, so let's move over to this leaf up here. And this is definitely going to be layered. I'm going to start out first with my apple green. And I put just basically a, a, a coat. Um, if we come back and refer to some of these pictures, you can see that it's kind of lighter in the center and dark as it gets towards the outside. So first you place the apple green down. And again, we're going to be layering the color. Then I'm going to come in with my, let's see here, let me make sure which color I'm supposed to be using next. Ah, beach green. That is a nice, lovely dark green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to color kind of along the stitch line and down all around the edge. Make sure you get enough in the center. And I'd slightly overlap with your apple green. This is just to make like the light is shining on top of the leaf. Okay. There we go, that's covered, good coverage. And once again, dip my brush into the fabric medium. I like to start in the center 
whenever I have a lot of stitching and I want to make sure I don't get outside, if you start in the center and then work towards the stitching, you'll have a less likely chance of actually spreading the color beyond that. And I'm going to go over here now and do this one as well. And see, you can get a nice blend of the two colors. Now, I've noticed that this one side is substantially lighter than the other. So here's a quick trip to add more color. I'm going to dip my brush into the fabric medium, and I'm going to get just right here at the base, just get a little bit of this beach green and come in. Mm, that's probably a little bit more than I want, but that's okay. We can spread that around. And actually, let's bring it over to this other side. Now, notice when you do this, you know, you never really get rid of the lighter color that's underneath. Because these colors are considered translucent, anything that you put down first, no matter how much you put on top, will still show through the, the second color. So good. Actually, I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So what, that technique, by the way, is considered a, a wet on dry where you have a wet brush, you go to dry ink, and then you put it on your fabric. Now here again, before you finish with this, make sure that you wipe the excess fabric medium off your pencil. If you do not, it will dry on your pencil, it will dry hard, and you will have to scrape it off or uh, Put, uh, sharpen your pencil with a, a pencil sharpener. All right. So now let's move on to the rose. And I want to show you how to get this kind of dark to light effect. And that color that we're using is fuchsia. Let me put these others down and grab my fuchsia color. I'm just again going to do one petal and I'm going to put a fair amount of strong color down here. Now I'm not going all the way up. I'm just, this is probably about mm, an eighth of an inch worth of color. And I'm going to show you two ways to do this. This is first the dry on dry technique. We do that. Again, dip our brush into the fabric medium. Get the color wet first. So we've done that. And then drag the color with the fabric medium up to the top. So what you're doing is you're creating a gradation by bringing the stronger color and kind of what I consider to be the excess color up to the top, okay? And if you wanna put a little bit more color down, you can come in and add it just right here at the base. That will deepen that color even further. And again, you can come in and drag the color back up if you want more on that particular petal. All right, let's learn the second technique. And I'm going to go to this one back here. I'm going to, first of all, get my brush cleaned off and I'm gonna dip it in the fabric medium and I'm gonna come in here and just get that entire petal wet with fabric medium. This is considered to be a wet on dry technique as well, where you get your fabric wet and then come in with your color, and you can see it goes down very strong, not unlike what is right above it, but notice I'm gonna put just very, very little down. And without dipping my brush back in the fabric medium, I'm going to use the wet fabric medium that is already down on the fabric to drag that color up. So there are two different ways that you can get a gradation for uh, working with, and I love this technique. This is actually one of my favorites. Um, you can tell that it gives you immediate shading. You don't have to necessarily be an artist in order to get this. So let me encourage the use of this. If you'll notice as well on 
these small little flowers right here, there's actually that same tech being used where you take the color and you apply it to the back end of this. Now, let's go ahead and do this so I can show you that here real quick. For this particular one, it's actually a combination of two colors. You first are going to lay down this violet. And I love this color. Actually, um, some of the colors that Inktense has in the purples and rose and red colors are, are some of my favorites. They're, they're really beautiful colors. Now I'm going to bring that fuchsia back over and I'm gonna do a combination. Now notice that I'm bringing the pencil into the purple, but I'm not going all the way up to the end. What I just wanna do is bring these colors up to the edge so that the color fades as it reaches the top of the petal. Once again, dip your brush into the fabric medium, start with the dark and get the dark pretty much wet first. Then drag your color up into the fuchsia and you'll notice a beautiful combination of the two colors together as you blend the to the outer edge of the petal. That's a beautiful technique. I really, really love this one. This is another one of my favorites, particularly when you have two mm, compatible but contrasting colors. So I'm just dragging some more of that purple color up to mingle with the fuchsia, and that just gives it a really nice, lovely shade. Now, with what little I have on my brush, oops, I didn't get enough, I guess. You can come back down here and grab some of that purple, and then notice you can come in and put a little bit of the lighter shade behind there so it creates kind of a pastel look. And you're not really taking away from that petal. You're just grabbing some of the excess color and bringing it up here so that you get that very pale, pale pastel. Now, another way of doing pastels, and I'm going to pull out the, let's do the, the fuchsia so we can put it on the inside of this one over here. Just like what we did earlier with the beach green, you can bring a bit of color, and I actually just kind of put it here on the plate, and then dip my brush back into the fabric medium, and I really dilute the color that's there on my plate and then come back in with that diluted color. And as you can see, now you're going to get more of a pink color rather than the purple. And you can bring that pink over into the purple to get kind of that combination shade. Now, if you wanted again, bring some more of the purple. Here's my violet. I can get a bit of that color as well. Again, put it down. See, that's a very strong color. So you don't want to put it down right away, what you wanna do is blend it as much as possible until you get this lighter shade of lavender, and then you can come back in and over color where you put the fuchsia. And again, it just gives you that nice pale color. Um, let's say you've put too much down and you want to uh, basically lighten it back up again. You can come in with a paper towel and dab it and that will take away some of that excess fabric medium, which then takes away the excess color. All right, so now you've learned the techniques for how to do the flowers. Um, you just follow the step-by-step -step coloring instructions, and that should be able to get you the colors. So